and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 A War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our Saving Your Disaster campaign, the It's Already Lost campaign. Today is time for the Dark VIP mission and then essentially doing a couple of moves on the strategic layer in order to ensure that we're effectively setting up the Avatar project for success. But before we can think about that, let's get a bit creative here. So whom are we going to have on this mission? Slider is ready again, which is perfect. We want to have a ranger. Deep Six is going to be our grenadier. And Hawkeye as the sniper is back in action. And finally, one of our Templars could be good to go. Emily Warden is ready. Music has taken quite a bit of wounds, but Emily should be good to go. She's the one with the Bladestorm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she got Bladestorm. Okay, cool. Let me equip everybody real quick. All right, that looks more like it. We got the DLC weapons. Uh, everybody is flexing their DLC weapon. Got the nice uh, little axes. A lot of um, blue screen rounds, make beacon, some healing, and of course the good old mind shields. What you would expect from a perfect or near perfectly equipped team before the chosen weapons are coming in. I am hoping that we can get the armor upgrade soon. Alright, guess who just landed? Damn right, it's us. Okay, so we are on high, gro uh, high ground. Dark VIP here, exit zone there. And I think it's only two or three packs, which inherently makes the assumption quite clear that the Warlock uh, would be on this map. Interesting. Let's move up. Get a bit closer to these guys. You direct. Slider moves over here. I'm all over it. Good to go. All right, so far so good. Got a bit of Overwatch. Let's see what they are going to do. They are moving away. Too bad. Would have loved to engage them there. Still got plenty of time. Let's just double move to see that no one is there. Alright, that worked like a charm. No need to ask twice. I see the path. Heading there now. Hawkeye moves a bit closer. And Slider also moves a bit closer. Finally, our spark. Let's see what the hacking rewards are going to be. Facility lead. Oh, wow. No. Oh, no. Uh, that was so good. It would have saved this campaign in a brink of a second. Uh, we're now revealed. Doesn't mean that we've triggered anything. Definitely, we're going to be in in a bit of a problematic situation. Gods elevate me. Uh, too bad. The facility lead. Okay, what are we dealing with? He reveals automatically. Can summon troops. Overwatches, immune to explosions and regenerates, but takes damage from close and hates Templars. Well, buddy, I can tell you, I got a Templar right here who wants to talk to you. And you and her are not going to be friends. We just picked up a unique signature. One of the chosen is here. That thing is only going to make trouble for us until we deal with Look it. Look at that. Armor still holding. The monster 
All right, we just saw that there is a pretty nasty pack down there because uh, currently Fog of uh, War is unavailable. So double Archon plus Spark. Oh wow. You will return to the elders, Commander. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Well gotta do what we gotta do, right? So let's start with this here. To get out of the way, mainly. Overdrive. hate the fact that he can explode, but it's just not fun. Whatever you say. Moving over. And there is yet another pack. Oh, pretty dense. Pretty dense uh, set of enemies. But we could hit both of them with a freezing grenade. That would at least solve uh, this issue. Okay, I can do a couple of shenanigans over there with a the action economy. This here hopefully will hit both of them and bring them down. Fantastic, the priest is gone. Shieldbearer takes another hit. And let's just kill him. All right. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. How many is that now? We could go in hard and uh, then have yet another pack to deal with. But that might be stretching it too far. Got a Mimic Beacon, so that would theoretically work. Yeah, but no need to use all of the cooldowns. Zombies will come on top of it, so it's actually going to be quite a slugfest. Even without dealing with them. But on the other hand, we need to get the Templar involved. Uh, so we're potentially forced to get that third pack pulled. Maybe they also move. Maybe it is the same pack. I don't know. Okay, so there's not another pack, which means this year is the right play. And this hopefully will yep, deal with him. Fantastic. So, we would have line of sight, which means if we're doing the following,
This solves our immediate problem. Just both of them are frozen, so nice little crowd control here. How do we want to get her down? I think that that is a valid, a valid option. Fantastic. Enemy eliminated. That means all of them are down. And now theoretically what I could do is I could run and gun, give another action over here. Then still have the shot and use the throwing axe as well, but I think that's uh, almost overdoing it to a degree. For now, this here is good enough. Oh, it's a kill. And with it, we got Implaceable. Uh, not yet untouchable, but implaceable. And let's get up to here. That's just a fantastic spot to start with. Don't want to get any closer. Instead, just parry. And this here is starting to beat him down. Not a lot of damage, but still. Alright, fantastic. Even a couple of more enemies. There are the zombies. If we're lucky, they are going to spawn next to our melee units. Yep, we are. Well, not all of them. Alright, so that's an, a massively reduced threat, specifically if one of them goes uh, into spectral mode. Yep, there is the spectral rupture. Okay, so in terms of explosions, we're moving up. I think we've still got to deal with that zombie here. A bit unfortunate. But it was necessary. Okay, so what we could do is we could hit this and it would destroy everyone. Um, in the meantime, let's set up to kill the Archon. Still get momentum if needed. We're going to use the plasma grenade as indicated before. That should kill all three of them plus shred. There we go.
All right. Back to the teamwork. This Andromedon needs to die. And one way of doing that is moving up close and eventually getting it down. Half cover is not perfect. We might need the Mimic Beacon, so I've got to be careful here. That's like, what, two, four, six, eight, nine, and... It's unfortunately not good enough. Problem with chain shot isn't why I wouldn't want to use it. I wouldn't have wanted to use it before. <sighs> it. It only kills it, but not, uh, but not the shell. Like it will not continue firing. Killing this guy would be an option. Yeah, I think we're running out of options here, unfortunately. That's a hundred percent hit in. A 66% chance to kill it, plus the crit, so around 70% chance to kill it. So I think we're going to go down that route. However, is it really worth it? We might as well go and try to kill this guy. And Bladestorm will deal with the rest. Can't hit either of these guys, but we can soften up the Andromedon quite substantially. Nice. Alright, there is the Mimic Beacon. And here is the Blade Storm that unfortunately doesn't kill him. Ah, minimum damage. Which means the Beacon potentially will not last. Guy was Throat, so has a negative at the moment. This is looking a bit grim. Going to take one shot. Interesting. Return fire triggered for the very first time. Another blade storm, and then at least the block uh, worked out well. The parry, rather. Yeah, slight miscalculation. Those two could have been dead. We're keeping the high ground. Moving as ordered. 
Let's kill the Archon first. There we go, fantastic. Running and gunning. Rolling out. Time to deal with that stupid little trooper here. Wow, we really just did not kill him. All right, luckily we got our pistol ready and loaded. set these guys up for a kill Heading to that location. Flanking the priest, nice little execution. Fantastic. Which also means the Andromedon will die. That gives us more focus, which we badly need. And we can almost reach even more focus. Tempting to sprint. But let's use some restraint. These were all of the enemies. It's now time for the Warlock. Now. One more round until zombies. Yeah, we don't want Bladestorm to trigger. I already had that with the Dark VIP. I'm going. Move next to it. The Dark VIP tried to move away and Bladestorm killed it. Status confirmed. Target package in custody. Superior hair trigger. Fantastic. Alright, we know the Warlock is somewhere there. We are going to Overwatch, reload Overwatch, reload Overwatch, reload Overwatch. Potentially reinforcements are coming in and then of course the zombies. Unless the Warlock decides to finally grow a pair of bolts and charge uh, charges in. It would be hilarious if we execute him. Chosen in our sights. It's time to take them out. Looks like they called him back up. Menace 1 5, we're picking up an enemy transport inbound on your current position. Your selfish pursuits under the guise of resistance will lead to so many needless deaths. All right, we're moving up, and it's time to first of all remove the cover. That will not deal any damage to him because he's immune. But. As you can see, nice little shredding happens nonetheless. Oh, basic. How basic? Did he just call me a basic bitch? I find that highly offensive. Little shredding, of course, we dare strike you. You will pay the price. 
There we go. Rent damage increased. This world will never be yours again. Even your seemingly effective tricks are still nothing more than that. Um well. Moving in. Concealing ourselves for some extra damage. And this here is a nice little flanking shot. There we go. Alright. Eight protocol. On to Warden here. Not that it makes a huge difference, but still. Don't tell me we executed him now. Well, could have waited uh, with my parry because now we could have moved up there. At least he couldn't summon anything. All right, time for some reinforcements. What are we dealing with? Interesting. Start with a bit of a warm up shot here. Reloaded. Automatic reloading. And well, it seems like a home run. Whoa, you see that? Death from above into oh, movement wait, wait, wait. because we gotta move soon. Charging in to take care of that captain, which we're going to do. So he's already down, which only leaves us with this guy here. Overdrive. Into shot, which misses. And shot, which finally hits. Nice little shredding, by the way. We got Bladestorm, so this here should be a kill. Not too shabby. Implacable no to provoke not. a flanking, which means this guy will move, and moving afterwards triggers... Blade Storm. We're picking up the Dark VIP. Don't make this hard on yourself. And starting to move out. There is the forest movement. And there is the Blade Storm kill. Good job. Good fucking job. All right. Moving. 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 And... Let's move already. Already there. 
Grapple. Grappling. Into yet another move. Finally. All right, we still got seven turns left over. That was a bit of a one-sided gig. That was a bit of a one-sided gig, but nonetheless fun, and we also defeated the Warlock. Fantastic. Too bad that we didn't got the facility lead. That would have been awesome. We can take them down. We just have to figure out how to keep them down. Good. We got a lot of supplies. A lot of supplies. Still wouldn't want to spend anything other than other than the suits. We're continuing to make contact and then eventually build the tower here. That's what the plan was. And I think we also wanted to invade this alien facility here, which we can do right away. I'll do that off screen because it's just um, a run with a single Reaper. It's not going to be a super interesting mission. Also, I want to make sure that I can save all of this here in 10 episodes or less. That's sort of the idea behind these runs. And we might want to take Sandman here because they still get experience. So I'll figure that out and whilst we're launching the mission you can already think about what else is going to happen on the strategy layer. See you in a second. Alright, and back. So pretty straightforward. This here reduces the Avatar process by one and the project itself is delayed. And the delayed part is the one that we were looking for because now, until the next facility is being built up, we're not going to see much of an Avatar project progress. That's exactly what we were hoping for. That way, essentially all of the blips that I reduce will be advantageous for the owner of the save game. Still trying to get another facility lead eventually. Oh wow. I will question my followers as to what happened. I'll do that off screen as well. Alright, there we are. Oh, salute. Commander, Not much to be seen to be uh, to be honest. And uh, for those of you who are wondering why I'm doing this off screen, I think the hundred and fifty uh, solo run onto an advent facility or uh, another ambush is just not as sexy as it could be. The ambush missions really could be a bit more varying in their objectives. The idea is great, but it is incredibly repetitive. Metal Fortitude is fantastic. That is an awesome order. One of the best. All Battle Madness only lasts one turn. So, so good. And we're reducing Avatar pro uh, progress here. Another resistance order. That's not bad either, but the number one, um, the number one priority is getting all of uh, that avatar progress down. Who needs extra aim? Our sniper does. So nice little reward there for a high-level sniper. I'll order my people to get underway immediately. Fantastic. All right, back in action. Two Larum cores are gone. Oh, that is not good. 
And there's the powered armor we were looking for. Fantastic. Celestial gauntlets can be upgraded. And we could go in five days for the storm gun, which I think is not a bad idea. Specifically since it's inspired, that's five bonus days. And afterwards we're going for the shadow chamber. I will begin our research immediately. Good. In terms of engineering, let's hope we can upgrade the armor. A couple more Alarium crystals. Hmm. 40 more Alarium. Spark upgrade would be gr is all oh, is great as well. Serpent armor certainly is great. Gauntlet is good. Uh, I, w I want uh, the armor. And we need more Alarium in order to pull this off. Alternatively, we could go with either beam cannons or the gauntlets. That has an advantage because it would reduce the Alarium. And tell the game that we need more of it. So let's go with beam cannons. Alarium is down, and that will hopefully tell the game we need another source of Alarium. Another shredder gun. Okay. Still not the heavy gun that I was hoping for. So another experimental heavy weapon. Let's put two in there. Because the guy might actually get war suits later, and then those uh, the things are super helpful. Good. Technical analysis finally available. Yeah, we don't have enough intel to buy something and then also make contact. I definitely want to make contact to Europe because we want the access to another facility. This here is still too far away. And also double agent is not a bad uh, continent bonus. Got more supplies here, which we currently don't need. Larum would be fantastic. The intel is good as well. So we're taking that one here. That's going to be the next mission, guys. Uh, Operation Death Valley for 84 intel, which we hopefully can then afterwards turn into um, maybe some more Ilarium in the black market. Who knows? Maybe there is some available. But yeah, Intel is much appreciated at that point in time. Overall, it looks better. I'm still trying to upgrade his armor. Only thing really needed is Elarium. Supplies are looking still fine-ish. Another supply rate might be the right way to go. We're definitely solid on income. So in seven days, uh, when the supply drop is happening, there will be a substantial income for him. And he now also has like three continents which is good it's really solid so it's just a matter of time until uh, we, we will be able to get here and here and with having a lot of territory the problem of not being able to reach the facilities also finally ends because no matter where the aliens are going to put facilities in you will be able to reach it that brings us to the end of uh, this uh, long um, episode thanks for watching guys if you enjoy the content please leave a comment and a like down below that would mean a lot for me and see you in the next run bye bye